Hey crew, welcome back. It's Dr. Jared here at Premium CrossFit. Not CrossFit Premium, Premium CrossFit um, with the fitness dragon, uh, Matt Green, and, and everyone else. There we go. Uh, we're talking about 17.2, uh, a little bit of prep. Uh, just finished it, got into the second round of muscle ups. Got 13 through, just kind of fell apart with the muscle ups. So a little disappointed, but I'll try that again. Try and get through uh, uh, into almost finishing that fourth round. The big thing though is it wasn't because I was falling apart like in 17-1 uh, where you know, people's backs were giving out. It's not necessarily that type of a workout. You need to be able to express your gymnastics and have some cardio capacity to be able to do that. But I really ran out of my gymnastic capability, but uh, my body felt pretty good. Reason uh, that that was the case is I really warmed up this kip position. The first thing is we got to really make sure we go through and clear out our thoracic spine so it has plenty of extension. We try and kip like so. We're going to be mashing through our shoulders, bending elbows, wrists, elbows, shoulders are just going to die even in the toe to bar. We want this to be very open and available as far as shoulder flexion and external rotation so I can get here with a lot of spring without a whole lot of compensation pattern there. Lots of extension through that thoracic spine to support that so that I can stay neutral in my lumbar spine so I'm not kind of compressing through there. Uh, the other thing is opening up through the hip, even for the kip, that's an important part so we're not tearing through thoracic spine. We can really open up into that nice bottom position. Um, the next thing we went through is kind of the other part of the toe bar, which means, hey, I got to really open up these hamstrings just on a very, um, you know, neutral, spine neutral position as far as getting a lot of length there, but then also letting everything kind of round into global flexion here through the spine. So I'm very relaxed. In the toe bars, I don't want to be gassing through my lats. So when I need those for the muscle up, I, I run out. I think I might have gassed a little bit. I could kind of partition or open that up just a little bit better in the first two rounds when it's toe to bar. So I have a little bit more capacity with my lats and that close down when I have to get up and over the bar. Just make sure you got tons of length through that uh, toe to bar. So this position almost feels a little bit like relative rest. I know some of you are like, are you kidding me? But the better you get into that position, the easier it is. As we go into this walking lunge first, you're gonna have to have a lot of that thoracic spine uh, flexion. And then we also talked about your, um, excuse me, thoracic spine extension, shoulder flexion and external rotation for the kip, but also matching that in your uh, front rack position. If you can get this on kind of that front part of the shoulder and then roll up and, and hook it in behind your head, we'll show a little bit more about that. I think that's the best place. Reason being is I can get that locked in and still have my thoracic spine open and my rib cage able to expand so I can breathe. Real, realistically, uh, my, my glutes were pretty tired from that uh, walking lunge, but it was kind of a, a vacation in terms of the upper extremity because I just kind of sat those there, pinned them in, was able to hold an upright torso and really feel fine with that walking lunge. Why that was the case though, is I spent a lot of time working into extension and internal rotation. So a lot of couch stretch, a lot of opening up the outside part of that hip with some matching, mashing, getting into really opening up, getting into hip extension, just making sure that I got plenty of range right here so I can take these big long steps. Because I want a big distance between my steps. I had about seven steps, all right? We don't want eight or nine steps across there, especially if you're a shorter athlete. And if you're a longer athlete, you want to be able to make sure that you're getting that advantage by having to do less work, but getting the credit for that. If you're shorter, make sure you're very opened up here so this is easy, so you're only hitting eight steps instead of potentially nine or ten, which would just, uh, that's a lot of unnecessary work. The last piece of this is flexion for the cleans, being able to find this nice solid position where I'm nice and neutral through the lumbar spine. I got plenty of length through, the flex, uh, through my hamstrings so I can just touch the head of that uh, dumbbell to make it a nice, easy clean. You get it pretty rhythmic with that. It's actually pretty easy. So look at making sure some of these, uh, if, we, if we look more at the mobilizations, you're looking at thoracic spine extension roll, working kind of a front rack position. If you've been to the office, you kind of know how to do that or follow us the dislocator pass through, make sure you really maintain your neutral spine so you're getting true uh, flexion external rotation through the shoulder. Work in Sphinx or Cobra, kind of that upward dog position to open up the front part of the hip. Your couch, it says cough, cough it should be couch stretch, I've been coughing too much I guess. Uh, squatting runners, um, that what we talked about the last time, really open up that front hip but also the, uh, the back hip for your um, 
walking lunge, your uh, squat hammy squat, what we've done to open up the uh, uh, hamstring for the clean, and finally the nose to the knee, whether you're standing or down on the ground. Those mobilizations will work good to make sure you're as efficient as possible and you can hold on uh, with your capacity to be able to express your gymnastic talent. Good luck, guys.